If I was a flicker in Satan's life story, right? A flicker to move irregularly or unsteadily in, the, in Satan for whom is defined as the angel who in Jewish belief is commanded by God to tempt humans to sin, to accuse the sinners and to carry out God's punishment by the Webster Dictionary. And now my life is, a, is an inferno, right? And that is defined as a place or a state that resembles or suggests as hell in the civil and criminal courthouses in Seminole and Orange Counties in the state of Florida ever since August 12, 2008 at 10.40 in the morning, as well as inside of the federal courthouse in the Middle District of Florida on February 20th in 2018 at 9.20 in the morning, right? Ever since then, my, my life story, right? For which is, now this is the story, because now it's two stories. See, it's my life story and it's Satan life story in court. See, and I think that's what my friends and family not realizing that I'm telling my life story and they telling me about Jesus' story. And I'm saying, well, Jesus didn't tell his story. You are just like those who told Jesus' story. You don't know Jesus just like those people didn't know Jesus. Because he was saying the same thing I'm saying. Like, man, how do you know who I am and you don't even know who Abraham is? Right? But, but see, this is the thing about now. You could... You could reference then and hopefully wake people up so anyway so a story is an account of incidents right or events so now it looked like i would I, um some incidents did not happen now let's look at an incident an occurrence of an action or a situation that is a separate unit of experience see so now my family looked like it was an incident, right? But I'm saying this the devil's an occurrence of an action. See, I didn't do nothing. So the, uh, the occurrence is the devil's action. See, occurrence, something that occurs. So see, in 2008, the devil entered into my life story. Now, my friends and family was telling me to, like, let the devil narrate my life story. And I'm saying, man, nah, bro, like, what you thinking I didn't do? So they like, well, we all can't be wrong. And I'm saying, how can you be right if you talking about me and I'm telling you you wrong? How you just going to insist you right? and then say, I'm crazy. I'm saying, man, it's my life story, man. Man, you let it go, man, start over. I'm saying, bro, you acting like you can ball up your life and throw it in a trash bin. I'm saying, man, I'm living, this is my actual life. And, and they telling me, man, like, man, let it go. I'm saying, bro, I'm, I let it go, but why they gotta get away with it? Like, why, did, why why are you letting somebody, I ain't letting nobody, you let them take your house. I'm saying, well, what I was supposed to do if they using the sheriff, if they using the police, if they using the judge, if they using the president. So if, if, if God is using Satan to get me to sin, then I'm saying, don't you see all of the people and the, um, the titles that Satan used, but now you say, no, nah, man, this ain't your, like, no, you need to give it to Jesus. I'm saying, well, he got his own life story and occurrence when G when this de the devil entered into his life story. He told Matthew, look, like I'm telling all y'all, 
But nobody want to say nothing about the devil. They want to talk about the victim. And then when the victim become an inferno that suggests is hell, they want to speak about heaven. And I'm saying, well, we in hell. You in hell. I ain't in hell. And I'm saying, well, how can you separate the hell I'm in from the life you live in? And that's the thing about a slave. See, that's what I'm telling y'all, younger generation. I'm saying, listen, man, I was young too, dealing with this same mindset. This stuff don't change. It's that when you get older, either you get tired of it and then strike out, or you just give up and succumb to it. See what I'm saying? Or you stay away from it and then they call you an atheist, right? But you're saying, well, if life isn't real now, how was life real then? You, you know what I mean? Like, we live in life, but we live in a lie, right? But they say, well, I'm living my truth. I'm saying, exactly. You live in your truth. See, I'm saying, but I'm living someone's lie. And then they get mad with me. I'm saying, well, why don't you get mad with the person that I'm showing you is lying to you? Oh, they've been doing it forever. I'm saying, well, how long you been living? Forever? How long your child been living? Forever? I'm saying, man, wake up, bro. What, what is wrong with you, right? But now, now we in this occurrence, right? See, the action or fact of happening. Or occurrence. See, now we in this occurrence. And we got two histories. Right? It's my history. Let's let's look at history. And this is what I'm telling my friend. I'm saying, well, what about my history? Oh, this is his history. And I'm saying, see, I mean, like, bro, and then, or it's his story. They're like, man, what is wrong with you? I'm saying, okay, man, but I'm in court. Um, establishing my legal fact that my life was real. Like I didn't subsidize my life with criminal activity. But it's like, well, maybe if everybody doing it, but that's what I said to my mother. I said, mama, I, like I say, I don't know what I did, but I did something. But I remember what I said and I remember what my mother said because it blew my mind. And she said it quick, too. It wasn't like, boy, it's it, it like she was waiting to say it. You know, she say, I say, mama, everybody doing it. She say, Tommy, it ain't everybody if you don't do it. And I'm like, oh, man, she right. It ain't everybody if I don't do it. I'm somebody. You see what I'm saying? So now I'm separating my history from this fake history. And now my friends telling me to be fake. And I'm saying, man, I work too hard to be real. I work too hard, man. I was out in the sun when they were saying that it was a heat advisory and they was telling people to stay inside. Me and my fellow postal workers, male and female, were still delivering mail. Man, I was in a hurricane, man. I mean, man, the mail, I'm blowing, the mail blowing but the mail had to go, man. And then I get to the place, the mail wet, and the lady tell me, my mail wet. Like I'm dry. And you got to look at these people like, lady, here, and keep moving. Because you said, man, I'm drenched. It's raining. You want to talk about your wet mail, and I'm trying to get home. See, just like now. See, this is what I'm telling y'all. My life has never changed. I just got older in it. And now that I'm living it with maturity and I'm tired. See, I'm saying I'm not tired of living. I'm tired of fighting. See, that's two different things, right? Because I done made it to court now. So anything I do now going to be my history, right? Which is a chronological, let's Look at this, chronological. 
of relating to or arranged in or according to the order of time. So how could I go from being born January 8th, 1969 at 220 in the morning, I mean, in the afternoon, excuse me. How can I jump through any of being 54 years old on August 4th in 2023? How could I, you know, at six, what is uh, 6.23 in the morning, right? So what can I do to break that cycle, that chronological order? Like, what could I do? I had to live from then to now. So now that I'm giving my testimony of how I made it from Halifax Hospital out of my mother's womb to giving you this uh, testimony on August 4th, which is the first day that I had in, in 2008 that I went to the judge, John D. Woodard, and told him what I'm telling you, that I'm an innocent man and you violate my rights. And that's when I hit him with domestic violence according to statute, and I hit him with repeat violence according to statute. See, that's when I tell you I had to use uh, the statutory law. See, I'm saying domestic violence is a statute, and I also use constitutional amendments in the um, separation of church and state. See what I'm saying? I'm saying, hey, in America, we have freedom of religion, but, but we don't have freedom to infringe on someone else's belief. See, if you have freedom of speech, then you have to be held accountable for the speech you use. See, so you have, you can say whatever you want, but you're going to be held accountable for what you said. See, that's why when they give you Miranda rights, they tell you anything you say can and will be used against you in the court of law. So you can say what you want to say. See what I'm saying? But you're going to be held accountable for what you said. So whatever what you said caused then you are that then you are co-conspirator in what your words caused. You see what I'm saying? See, and that's what's getting me about um America. You know, it's like when Dr. Martin Luther King and Minister Malcolm X and uh Mr. uh Fred Hamptons and uh Mr. H. Rap Brown, but he changed his name uh because he's a Muslim now. Um and uh, Miss Angela Davis and, uh, you know, uh, and all of the people, Ms. Mr. Uh, Marcus Garvey and all of those great people, right? This country, right? They call and they say weaponizing the justice system. That's what they did to keep us slaves. They weaponized the justice system. That's why they didn't want us to have equal protection under the law. And now they complaining about the same law I'm talking about the rich people now. See, poor people, right, right? We don't have a team of lawyers. We have one public defender that be telling you about his case or her caseload. And you saying, hey, man, what I care about all your other defendants, I need your undivided attention with my case because that's the case I care about, right? Now, that's why I'm telling you people whom they told me about y'all case. That's when I became your public defender when they was telling me and I'm telling them, look, I can defend my own case. You understand what I'm saying? I'm a veteran. I can defend my case. But they didn't even want to hear the evidence. I'm saying, wait a minute. you They just telling me to plead guilty. And I'm saying on something I'm innocent of. Why would I plead guilty and I'm innocent? You want me to plead guilty of losing my house and I know you stole it? So this is what I'm telling parents, right? And then I, I realized that most fathers don't raise their children. I, I had to start listening to them complain. And I'm like, oh, Tommy, see, you, you in the house with your kids. These people you talking to, man, they I, they ain't, they really didn't raise their kids. They was 
outside the house. Or they so stuck in survival that they can't see the shoreline. So I'm looking and I'm saying, oh man, I was never like that. That's why I'm testifying on my own behalf, right? So now I got it, it's over 15.